My beloved brothers and sisters, indeed as an ummah, our hearts are bleeding due to what is happening to our brothers and sisters across the globe, more so in Gaza and in Palestine. And it would be wrong for me to commence without mentioning the situation and without saying a prayer for them and without highlighting the situation. May Allah Almighty make it easy for them. May Allah Almighty grant them peace, goodness, victory, stability, and may Allah Almighty change the condition to a much better condition. We ask Allah to grant the same to all those who are struggling and suffering across the globe, no matter who they are and where they are. There are so many whom we know of, but perhaps so many we don't even know of. They are struggling in the cause of justice and goodness, in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make it easy for them. My brothers and sisters, when we were born, we came onto this earth. A very important question would be, why did we come onto this earth? When we see a lot of suffering, we see sometimes children from the point of birth struggle, homeless, without clothing, without food, and so much more that happens. Why would Allah, the most merciful, the most compassionate, the most generous, the most amazing, the most kind, the most forgiving, do this? Why would he do this? Why is it that many of us, those who are here, those who might see this later, and even those whom we don't know, are struggling? Many of us are struggling just to pay our debts at times. Sometimes we have health matters. Sometimes there are social matters. The marriage is just not coming right. Sometimes our children are perhaps troubling us where we have sleepless nights because of what they're doing. Sometimes we have scenarios where we can't find a job. We don't even have the basic necessities. We don't have enough to buy a plate of food at the end of the day. Why would Allah do this? My brothers and sisters, it's an important question. Did you know that Allah Almighty mentions why he created us in the first place? He didn't need to create mankind or jinn kind, but he says he, he has created us in order to test us, to give us the eternal paradise. Whereas this worldly life, one of the biggest blessings is that it is only for a short period of time. If I were to tell you, you have to live in this condition that you are in forever and ever, it would be very depressing to note that, well, I don't even have a job. I hardly have food. I've got so many problems. My brothers and sisters are dying, be it in Palestine or wherever else it is. And here I am being told you have to live in this condition forever. One of the biggest blessings is Allah has made this world temporary because it is imperfect because of these challenges. Another very, very powerful point you and I as believers need to realize is when Allah says he created you to test you, Wallahi, it is proven because every single human being is being tested. There is no one, be it Muslim or non-Muslim, be it old or young, be it in Africa or in Europe, be it in the third world or the first world. There is nobody who can say I'm not being tested. Either a health matter, either some other problem. If you have all the wealth in the world, perhaps you cannot sleep. Perhaps there is something challenging. It goes to prove that when Allah says I created you to test you and I just want to see how you react with the test. Are you still connected to me or not? That's it. Then you know that it is true because everyone is tested. I remember speaking to a group of young boys who said, well, what proof do you have that we were created to test us? And I told them, well, you are being tested right now. That's the proof. Everyone in this masjid now, you have a challenge, don't you? You have some form of a test as you grow older. Perhaps your health might not be as it was when you were young. What is that about? It's a test. Allah says, never mind about all of that. You are going to return to us just now, just now you're going to return to us. And if you return to us, with a good connection with us, good news to you. If you disconnected as a result of your tests, then you are at a loss. If you disconnect from Allah because of a challenge he put in your life, 
then you are at a loss. So the question is, well, how long should I struggle for? I want to get closer to Allah. I have my problems. I am making dua. I am fulfilling my salah. I am fasting. I am steadfast. I try not to commit my sins, but it seems like the problems are getting worse. They're not getting any better. Allah says, don't worry, take it in your stride. And you will continue to take it in your stride until the day we decide to take you away. What that means is you're not allowed to decide when you're going to go. Allah says, we decided when you came onto the earth, we will decide when you leave it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, none of you should wish for death because of a problem in your life, because of hardship or difficulty that you're going through. You say, oh Allah, keep me alive for as long as you know that life is better for me and take me away when you know that it is better for me to leave. Amazing. It means, oh Allah, keep me alive for as long as you know that with this life that I'm going to be having, I will get closer and closer to you. Then the life is better. And oh Allah, when you know that I'm at a point where I'm the closest I am to you and things might just get worse, then take me away. So that I got back to you in a condition where it was the best of the days. And this is why another dua, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Allahumma ja'al khayra ayyamina awa khiraha wa khayra a'malina khawatimaha. O oh Allah, make the best of my days the last days of my life. And make the best of my deeds the last deeds that I engage in. And this is why, please make this dua constantly. Oh Allah, take me with Iman. Oh Allah, take me in a condition where the deeds I did just before you took me were the best of my deeds. MashaAllah. Oh Allah, let the days be the best of the days just prior to you taking me away, right at the end. May Allah Almighty make it easy for us. Yes, life is a struggle. Yes, you will continue, you and I will continue to struggle on different levels. Some have it more than others. One might ask, how come I have a bigger problem than you? Well, I tell you, La nafsan illa wusaha. This verse is unique. It means Allah does not burden a soul with more than it can shoulder. Allah gives you a capacity. I have a capacity. Some people, they have a pinprick on the baby finger and for them it's the end of their lives. And others, they've lost limbs and they are still happily moving forward. A believer will always happily continue to look ahead and look forward no matter what. Allah tells Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Worship your Lord until death overtakes you. Until the end. The term Yaqeen, according to the Mufassirin, refers to the end, the death. So the end of this world is not the end of your life as such. The end of this world is not the end of everything. In fact, it is the beginning of an eternal, everlasting, most beautiful life. If you have had the struggles of this world, you need to know that Allah will grant you the best of reward for the patience that you endured. And for this reason, Allah says, <laughs> Indeed, Allah rewards those who bear patience without a limit, unlimited reward. So what's my reward? My reward is equivalent to the patience that I bear. But when I bear patience for the sake of Allah in a beautiful way, as taught by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah says, for you, there will be an unlimited reward. What do you want? Imagine people going through a terminal illness and years have passed and they are struggling. They cannot walk. They can barely talk. They cannot understand. And those around them are taking care of them and saying, when will this end? It happens, right? When will this end? Well, if you are to bear patience and make the most of every single day, whenever it ends, Allah will grant you such a massive reward because the purpose of him sending you on earth, you fulfilled it correctly. 
you bore patience upon the struggles and you developed the best connection with him until you met with him. And he says, oh, my worshiper, when I put struggles in your life, you endured for my sake. Here is your paradise forever and ever as you want what you want, whenever you want, however you want, it's all yours. Imagine that day when we return to paradise, when we go back to Allah and Allah gives us the eternal paradise. May Allah Almighty gather us in Jannatul Firdaus. A believer, when goodness comes in your direction, it should not make you arrogant, haughty or proud. And when difficulty comes in your direction, it should never make you lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Have patience. Look at our brothers and sisters in Gaza, how when the life is being lost and when our brothers and sisters are being killed, you find some of the remaining family members with one sentence of theirs. They've taught entire humankind a lesson in faith. One sentence. You and I have not been tested on that level. May Allah not test us on that level. We are weak. We are so weak that we don't even know at times what to do in our own lives. And here are people saying, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Praise be to Allah upon all conditions. And what has happened? 45 members of the family killed because of an entire building that was blown up with women, children, and all innocent civilians. May Allah Almighty protect them and us. And you find one surviving teenager saying, Alhamdulillah, what are you going to do? Well, Allah looked after me all along. He's going to look after me still. And here we are losing a job and it's like Qiyama has come. Literally, we have one health matter and it's like the end of the world. I can't live. I can't survive. Look, learn a lesson from those who have real struggles in their lives as compared to ours. May Allah Almighty make us grateful people. My brothers and sisters, the struggle is real. I do not wish to belittle the struggles of any one of you. I have my own struggles too. When we look at each other on the face, you may not notice that this person is struggling because many people have the self dignity where they won't show you that I cannot make ends meet. They won't stretch their hand to beg even though they desperately need anything that comes in their direction. And this is because they want to bear beautiful patience. A sabrul jameel, a beautiful patience is when you can still worship Allah with a smile, but your life is absolutely negative. The only positive is that you have Allah. Lan Allah wa ma lana ba'd Allahi ahad. What do we have? We have Allah and besides Allah, we have nobody. Don't expect people to come to you. Allah will come to you. Continue knocking on his door. Continue worshiping Allah. Don't ever say, when is this going to end? Because you're questioning Allah. But continue to ask Allah, Oh Allah, keep me alive for as long as you know life is better for me. And take me away when you know it is better for me to go. And Oh Allah, in the interim, make easy for me my world the worldly life because I have to live here. Another sunnah dua of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where he said, Allahumma aslih lana deenana alladhi huwa ismatu amrina. O oh Allah, make good for us our faith because it is the main issue of our affairs. It is the main affair, the main matter of our lives. Make good for us our deen, our connection with you, O oh Allah. Deen is the most important thing. If I have a connection with Allah and I don't have anything in this world, I have still succeeded because I have a connection with Allah. Allahumma aslih li deeni alladhi huwa ismatu amri. O oh Allah, make for me, make better for me, make good for me, my faith, my deen, my religion, my connection with you, because it's the main matter. It's the main issue. There's nothing more important than my connection with you. Oh Allah, 
make better for me my dunya, my worldly living, because I have to live in it. So why do I want a better worldly life? Because I am forced to live in this world. By whom? By Allah. Who brought you into this world? Not you, Allah. Who chose where you're going to come? What race you're going to be? Which family you're going to be born into? It was Allah. Allah chose it. I have no choice. I have no say. And this is why we as Muslims and as believers believe that we're all equal because none of us chose where to be. We're all equal. We're supposed to be equal. It's only the forces of the world that came along thereafter and made us think that some were better than others. Whereas in the eyes of Allah, He says, Indeed, the most honored from amongst you in the eyes of Allah are those who are the most conscious of Allah. Those who have the best relationship with Allah. Those who are fearing Allah's punishment the most. Those are the best. If I'm conscious of the punishment of Allah at all times, and I'm more conscious than others, then I would be better. But part of my belief in Allah is I don't know if there is anyone better or not. I need to ask Allah for steadfastness until the day I meet him because shaitan will keep coming to make me feel you are better. You are better. It's not about me being better. It's about me trying. Allah will declare who is better on the day of Qiyamah. Who knows who is more pious today in this masjid? Allah alone knows who is more pious. There could be a person seated somewhere in a section we cannot even see right now who might in the eyes of Allah be the most pious from amongst us. And you and I wouldn't know. You look at a person dressed with a big, you know, huge garb, big beard, say this guy must be the pious, the most pious from amongst us without knowing. Allah alone knows. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ Allah speaks about when people develop a sense of self-righteousness. He says, he is the one who knows who is the closest to him, who has the greatest taqwa. That's Allah. So we continue to live our lives in a way that we develop a relationship with Allah Almighty. And Allah Almighty will grant us the best of this world and the next. My brothers, my sisters, never ever lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Victory comes to those who are patient. You need to know, as per the teaching of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that victory comes with patience, with endurance. Are you ready to endure? Are you ready to be patient? Victory will come in your direction. Two things can happen to a believer. Number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you what you want, how you want it, or makes things easy for you. So you have a victory on earth. Number two is perhaps you do not have exactly what you want on earth, but up to the point of death, you may have struggled and then you died. So one of two things, either you got the victory in the world or you got the victory in the hereafter. Have you lost? You haven't actually lost. It's called Ihdal Husnayn. At the time of war, Allah Almighty taught the believers that look, if there is this particular war and a person happens to win the war, they've gotten victory in the world. And if they lost it, they have victory in the hereafter. This is the whole idea of Ihdal Husnayn. You have victory upon victory. There is no way that a believer can be at a loss. Here's another hadith. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, "Ajaban li amri al-mu'mini, fa inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair." The affairs of a true believer are amazing because no matter what, all his affairs are good for him or her. In the case of a female, why are they good for you? Because if goodness comes in your direction, it connects you with Allah more. You you make what is known as shukr. You thank Allah. There is gratitude. I got so much, mashallah, my business did well. I got my job, I got married, I have children, I have this, I have good health. Allah says, did it humble you? If it humbled you and brought you closer to us, that is the only time you are successful. Otherwise you have failed. 
No matter what, you think you have everything. No, you failed. Subhanallah. The brother says, I have a Rolex. And he drifted away from Allah. And one day he saw his ex rolling. And he realized, whoa, I shouldn't have been arrogant just because I have a Rolex. What happens with your Rolex? If it brings you closer to Allah, Alhamdulillah, you will be rolling. And if you are distanced from Allah, what happens? Your family breaks, your relation breaks, your connection with Allah breaks. Is that what it was all about? Thank Allah. Make yourself humble. And the same hadith speaking about hardship and difficulty says, a true believer's affairs are amazing because when they face hardship, they bear sabr. It's better for them. What a great reward. Didn't I say moments ago that sabr is an act of worship that Allah says he gives you an unlimited reward for it. So was it a loss? No, it's a win. Win win. You have a test, for example, that you're going through and you need to be checked for a disease and your results are coming out after the lab is now testing your blood and what have you. And you're waiting. If it is negative, you are happy because it's clean and clear. It should bring you closer to Allah. Oh Allah, I thank you. And if it is positive, yes, it's a concern, but it should bring you even closer to Allah. Allah is giving you a chance to say, my worshiper, I want you to come close to me. You are not coming close to me, so I put a difficulty in your life. Now that I put this difficulty in your life, you'd better come close to me. A sign of my love is for me to put challenges in your life. This is why the hadith says when Allah loves someone, that's when he puts a challenge in his life. He wants him to get even closer to him. Inna Allaha idha ahabba abdani When Allah loves his slave, he tests him with greater tests. May Allah Almighty never test us with tests that will be too difficult for us to pass. So these are some of the pointers that I thought of today, being a blessed Friday in this lovely East London Masjid. And as you see, the Masjid is being renovated. I want to make sure that some of what Allah has given me is used to be a part of the renovation of the Masjid. And I invite you all from the mimbar on this beautiful day to spend a little bit of what Allah has blessed you with to also participate in a huge investment for the hereafter by putting some of it towards this house of Allah that you frequent and you often come to. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah grant us goodness. May Allah Almighty grant us the best of this world. بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن والسنة ونفعني وإياكم بما فيهما من الآيات والحكمة أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم